Too much. Get this unhooked. That's What's up, everybody? Captain Blair Wiggins here from Addictive Fishing doing AF number four live on YouTube. I see a bunch of people are starting to come on now. Good to see everybody's coming on. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Minn Kota trolling motors and uh, how basically they benefit you out fishing. I don't think I could get a lot of the jobs done out there that I do without one. They're uh, probably, the, the, hands down, they got to be the best trolling motor out there. Uh, they just came out with a new one called the Ulterra. If y'all have been seeing uh, any of the video that we made on it here recently, uh, it's a self-deploying trolling motor and uh, it's, it's one awesome uh, addition to the Minn Kota lineup now. It has the uh, iPilot you know, features on it, spot lock feature on it, and we're going to cover all that good stuff here tonight and talk about it. Um, so I guess, uh, let's see, a few more people come on and love the tuna fishing vids. All right. Well, appreciate that there, 605-15-AC, SC. <laughs> Everybody's handles on there is pretty fun. But, uh, yeah, man, trolling motors today. Going to do a couple of uh, look backs at this year's uh, show. A couple of them that we did with Kevin Beach out in Louisiana. Uh, some cool stuff we did out in Texas looking at grass beds with the Hummingbird 360. And I know I just said Minn Kota, but they're all part of the same family, which is Johnson Outdoors, which is Minn Kota, Hummingbird, Talon. Um, you got downriggers, the, um, something I don't use, downriggers. Every once in a while we use them, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of it. Uh, how much is it? Um, they're kind of proud of them, but I tell you what, if you ever put one on the front of your boat, the Ulteras, I had somebody, uh, and I'll do this after after the video, I'll, I'll put up what somebody asked, or told me about the Ulterra the other day, and it uh, I had a pretty good response for them. But um, let's see, Anthony, I've been fishing for as long as I can remember. Um, that's about it. I'm... Uh, I'm half a century old now, so I've been catching and killing a lot of fish here. <laughs> well, hey, let's take a look at this Ulterra video that I'm uh, talking about here. We filmed this back over last summer and uh, had a lot of people freaked out because they haven't seen a white one yet. The freshwater model had been out there for a long time. Now the saltwater version's out. So check this out if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you have, enjoy the video. Hey folks, Captain Blair Wiggins here from Addictive Fishing Television. I want to show you something brand new from Johnson Outdoors the makers of Minn Kota trolling motors. If you recognize the remote, it looks like the same old remote, but there's three new buttons on here that you're absolutely gonna fall in love with. You know, when they came out with spot lock, I thought, you know, what could get any better in a trolling motor? Well, Minn Kota has done it. This is the new Altera. You press the button twice when you get to your spot and it deploys all by itself. Don't have to get down to get your trolling motor down. You don't have to yell at your buddies down there to put the trolling motor down so you can get up to the spot. It deploys itself. I have a lot of people ask me, what happens if you're trying to set the motor down and you're in shallow water? Well, the trim feature is these up and down buttons right here. I will bring it up to where I know no matter where I stop, I'm not gonna hit any shallow water. So I bring it up as high as it can. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna remember that position for when I go and redeploy it. So now when I want to bring it up, time to go home, hit the button one time, and it's going to basically self-stow. That is an awesome feature. Unbelievable. Now when I'm ready to deploy it again, I hit the button twice, and it's going to go right back down to the same position. Once it stops there, if I'm deep water like I am right now, I hit the down on the trim button, and it takes it right on down. And there's two new versions of the Saltwater Altera. There's an 80 pound thrust model, which is a 24 volt. And this one is a 36 volt, 112. And 112 pounds of thrust will hold this 24 foot Skeeter. And it's about a seven knot current. I've had it do it. Works very, very well in a current. So if you get a chance, make sure you check out this new unit. Unbelievable. It's the Altera from Minkota, and it's the Saltwater version. Well, that's a pretty cool feature that that uh, Minn Kota has on it. Self-deploying, you can't beat it. I, um, matter of fact, there, if you happen to be a handicapped person, which, you know, I got a buddy of mine that I went to high school with, Peter Keene. If you out there happen to be watching, he's out there racing cars right now. But uh, he, uh, he could benefit by that, by that Altair because he's, um, he's paraplegic and he has a pontoon boat that he goes out on. It's fully rigged. 
And all he's got to do now is hit a button twice and it self-deploys. And I had somebody ask me, he said, what do you need a self-deploying trolling motor for like that? And uh, I, the perfect response I had to him, is, he said, you don't need that. You don't have to have a self-deploying trolling motor. And I said, well, you don't have to have air conditioning in Florida either, but it's nice to have in use. So if you, if you can get one, they're, they're an ultimate tool to have. I mean, you press the button twice and it goes down. Press it one time and it comes back up. Pretty neat tool. <clears throat> Let's see. I do a couple of questions here. I'm going to talk about spot lock coming up next. So, um, favorite type of fish to eat? Got to be mangrove snapper, hands down. I go out for them anytime I can. They're right here in Tampa Bay. I'm living in Plant City now, so it's right down the road here for me to come to Tampa Bay and and catch some uh, mangrove snapper, and then head out and do whatever. You know, there's permit out there now, so. Uh, got a lot, got a lot of, uh, opportunities out there. I can wake up at four o'clock in the morning, look at the weather on each coast and decide where I want to go fish. It's pretty cool living in Plant City now. Um, personally, you prefer tuna. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, if you, if you're able to get tuna all the time, that's a good, good fish to get. Uh, ever do a show from a kayak? Probably not. I, uh, I injured my back not well, when I was a kid, and I just can't sit in a bend-over position like that. I've tried every seat that is made to man, and I last about five minutes, and that's, that's as long as I can do it. But uh, stand-up pole all day long. I'll be, uh, be doing that, I hope, soon. Um, what's my favorite rod? I would suppose that is. My favorite rod has got to be the 7.2 in the... Insure series um, gets everything done that I need to get done. I've caught big snook on it, you know, mid-sized tarpon up to 60 pounds, and uh, it's just a good all-round rod. If I need to step it up, I usually step it up to the 7.9, and that's uh, that's a pretty good meat stick there for the big snook. <clears throat> do you like Louisiana? Because, do you like Louisiana fishing? Because that's where I'm from. I absolutely love Louisiana fishing. And I saw another question up there earlier about Matagorda Bay. Uh, didn't make it to Matagorda this year, but we did do two shows from the upper Laguna Madre, one from Baffin Bay and another one a little bit further South. We were fishing a land cut down there waiting for black drum and uh, redfish. It was pretty cool. Uh, ever do any fishing, uh, in Apalachicola or Port St. Joe? Well, won a, <laughs> won a couple of dollars in Port St. Joe. We won me and my partner, Tad Vandermark won the, uh, actually, no, that was, that was with Travis Tanner. We won one of the FLWs right out of Port St. Joe. Caught uh, caught a couple of nice fish and won 50 grand. So that was a pretty good day. Will I come back to New York for strikers? I'd love to. Just f trying to find the time to get up there and do it. What we want to do is head up to the Northeast up there and put those surf rods to use and catch some stripers in the surf. And uh, we'll see if we can do that. That, uh, that should be fun. Do you prefer cats or V-Haul boats? V-Haul boats, I absolutely love. The only time I've been on a cat's out of Louisiana with a couple of the guys tuna fishing out there. And, you know, if it gets you back, if it gets you from point A to point B, back to point A, it's done its job. That's, that's you know, my philosophy for, for a boat. Some do it better than others. And, uh, you know, that's one reason why I'm in a skeeter. <laughs> Um, if you can fish one spot for the rest of your life, where and what type of fish would you go for? Um, you know, I've, I've said it so many times on the show and I've had the opportunity, fortunate enough to go around and catch a lot of different fish, but still my favorite fish to catch is sea trout over 10 pounds. Um, you know, if I could target 10 to 15 pound sea trout for the rest of my life, I would be happy to do that. And uh, as long as I could eat mangrove snapper, I'd let all them big trout go. <laughs> Are the snapper still biting good in the bay? As far as I know, as long as the bait's there, the snapper are there. And uh, you can always get the snapper, you know, around any of those deeper structures. Um, we're going to take a look at the spot lock feature that uh, that Mencota offers on a few of their trolling motors. And I'm going to show you the remotes here. Everybody always asks me, what is this hanging around my neck? And if you haven't, uh, haven't figured it out yet, it's my trolling motor remote. And if you don't like this great big one... They also have a mini here that you can just, it, it has just all your favorite buttons on it that you use. This is the spot lock button. This is the rabbit button, which if you're, if you're going along at say a speed number three, you want to go to speed 10, you hit that and it's instant power and takes you to full throttle. And you hit it again, and it goes right back off to, uh, right back off to the speed that it was once set at. But uh, let's take a look at the, uh, at the spot lock. I was fishing with Kevin Beach out in Louisiana this year. Saw the uh, question about Louisiana. 
Awesome place, awesome guy to fish with. If you ever get a chance to fish with this guy, do it. He's one heck of a guy. You ever used a boat with spot lock on it like this? No, I have not. It's pretty cool. Being that it's my first time on a boat, I keep on staring back at the rig, making sure. What's that? Just making sure it's keeping us where we're supposed to be. It's keeping us dead on. Pretty impressive. It is pretty neat. Yeah, you know, with my boat when we're out here doing it, I'm manually holding it. When you're doing that, you know, your head's on the swivel, you're looking at the rig, the fish, the clients. Where's the color? You know we're not gonna see him. So he's about two inches down in this river water. Come on. Come this on. is all river water here, huh? Yeah. Is it pretty fresh on top? On top it is. Yeah, some days our Merc layer, I mean, might be three feet. Some days it'll be 15 feet. But underneath this, all this nasty fresh water, as all that good clean air is. Oh, now Ooh. that's a full yeah, grown. Yeah, that's a full grown one there. Boone and Crockett. I got him. I'm gonna show you all this. I can feel this layer right there through my gloves. That's a full grown one. <laughs> oh, now come up here real close. I want to show you this layer. This I don't even know what you'd call it. It's just the flat part of the the center line of the fish, but it's right here, right on its lateral line. Yeah, right on its lateral line. It starts right about here. You can feel it. Comes all the way down the tail, and right there. I mean, it is it is sharp. Uh, and that <laughs> is a moss. That's about, I don't know, 30? That's probably an easy 30. At least 30. Why? That is a thick fish. All right. Mr. Jack Carvel, go make some little ones. Well, that was the inshore Louisiana tuna. Somebody asked where was that show filmed at, and uh, it was on the inshore wrecks right there in Louisiana. And let me show you another cool feature other than that spot lock, and I'll do it with the, uh, with the small remote here that I was showing you. If you see this little button right here, this is a north button. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna keep you basically locked in on a north mode it's going to keep you north so if you if your boat swings this way your trolling motor is always going to keep you pointed north if you have a, a current coming from left to right right to left and you want to go in a straight line that motor is going to keep you in a straight line we used it uh several times this year tarpon fishing we also used it during a show with kevin farner we were king fishing instead of using the big motor we were using the the, the trolling motor just to go slow enough and to keep it quiet you know those big fish don't get that big being dumb so if you're out there and you know trying to get that big fish a lot of times that trolling motor running instead of the big motor is gonna is gonna help you get that big bite that you need especially if that big uh big fish out there the smart one um let's see here <laughs> man the internet is not filtered at all is it <laughs> Best inshore spot in Louisiana. Um, I always, my buddies out there always tell me, find the green water, you're gonna find the fish out there if you're red fishing. Um, the, the tuna out there, November, I mean, anytime you get out there and you got good weather, I think Louisiana, um, kind of like Cocoa Beach where I grew up, if you have good weather, you're gonna catch fish there. That's all there is to it. It's, it's a sportsman's paradise, no doubt. Let's see, where do you buy those coolers? Uh, the Ingle coolers can be bought online. They're also available, um, where have I seen them? Ace Hardwares, I've seen them in Ace Hardwares. Um, hopefully soon we'll be get them in Dick's here soon, but uh, we'll see about that. Um, but yeah, just go, go online. I think you can punch in your, uh, your um, zip code and it'll tell you where you can go definitely find one. But definitely hands down, they are great coolers. The original molded cooler out there. Uh, been around longer than anybody else, so I think they do know what they're doing. <clears throat> Leonard Hereman says, Blair, you should mention my name because please, then tell me your favorite wreck reef fish for eating, black grouper maybe. I uh, said it once before here a little earlier, mangrove snapper, hands down. You know, they're easy to catch. They're very good to eat. Um, absolutely love them. 
Ever surf fish for Pompano? Yes, I have, but we've never done it on the show. Hopefully we can, uh, like I said, we can do a surf fishing show coming up and feature the, feature the surf rods. I've used them outside of the show, but not during the show. If you didn't know, we have four surf rods from eight to 11 foot tall, and they're just, they're, they're as light as some of the inshore rods. I can't believe how, how light they got these rods. Um, have you ever been to Dunedin before? Yes. Have I ever flounder fished in New Jersey? Never have, but I just did a, a Dick's appearance in Wellington where a guy brought a picture of like a 17 pound fluke or something that he caught up in New York. Giant one. I think he's talking about my speaker. Oh, somebody mentioned, yeah, the speaker. Can you see that down there? Oh yeah, you can see it. That's the Ingle cooler right there with the baddest jamminest radio i mean a bluetooth in there it goes right to your smartphone and absolutely cranks it's uh you make a lot of people jealous of that and it holds 12 adult beverages with ice too so it's pretty cool um what do you find more fun light or heavy tackle definitely light tackle is a lot more fun for me you can i hate fighting fish with a broomstick uh, definitely would, would rather feel the fish and with the, uh, with the inshore rods, it's got enough power in the butt. I can still get the fish in quick enough to release it where the mortality rate, you know, the fish is going to live, you know, so if, if I'm releasing them and not putting them in the ingle, which I'd still love to do, <clears throat> do a cockroach bay show. Uh, never have done a show in cockroach bay, but fish there plenty of times in the FLW for those redfish. Victor. I can't see that. Can you see that last name? I'm gonna I'm gonna destroy it here. Hold on. Nai, Victor Nahaya. I guess. Am I close, Victor? <laughs> <laughs> Best place to sh target inshore, offshore. In March in the Keys. Uh, March in the Keys, I would head all the way down to Key West. Uh, if you got a chance to get over the Tortugas or, uh, you know, even as far away as you can get from people because it's wintertime, everybody from everywhere else where it's frozen is down in the Keys or in Florida somewhere because it don't freeze down here that much. So get as far away from everybody as you can and uh, you should be able to produce some fish. If you just get to Key West, uh, the sub wreck out there has got just a plethora of fish that come in there every single day to, to feed. And that's not hard to find because there's boats everywhere around it anchored up. Um, it's not a secret spot anymore. Best fishing trip this year so far. Tough to say it, a best fishing trip or a worst fishing trip. Uh, kind of like catching tarpon. They're all good. Some are just better than the others uh memorable one <laughs> we were we were down and this this show is going to air here coming up next year in april uh we were fishing actually planning to film down in stewart here this year and the weather has just been terrible nothing was biting and the big redfish showed up in port canaveral so instead of going around and floundering around all day long with mark nichols down in stewart we packed everything up headed two hours north to canaveral and did 48 inch redfish all day long so you can't beat that that was definitely a memorable trip so far for this year um, but that one will air next year uh caught some giant redfish it uh it's a cool way to do it we were fishing around the pogey pods a lot different than we did in um up in pamlico sound but uh we were still destroying them um what artificial is best for tarpon you know, it's the one, not to sound like a smart aleck, but it's the one that they're keying in on that day. It's just like, what's the best live bait to use? Some days they key in on past crabs. Some days they key in on blue crabs. Other days they'll key in on like dolphin bellies, you know, and you just never know. So that's why a lot of the guides have so many different baits out there. And there's so many different lures out there made for tarpon. But uh, let's take another look at the north mode I was talking about a little earlier with Ryan Farner, the Minn Kota enables you to catch more fish <coughs> because excuse me because it's not spooking them as you're sitting there trolling for them you don't have a big 300 horsepower motor underwater going blop, blop, blop. yeah it's quiet for you but downstairs underneath the water it's still making that popping noise so check this out we were using the troll motor to catch kingfish how big is the fish about to find out they do just one big run like that, or they can do a couple? Oh, they, you know, big fish will do multiple runs. Yeah, and I know yeah. over in the Atlantic, they do usually like three good runs. Yeah, three good runs. You know, and sometimes they can uh, run themselves right out. Yeah. It's like a pretty good fish here. Decent fish. Yeah. And off he goes. Oh, he's already rolling on his belly. And there he is. 
That looks like one for the smoker. 20 pound fish, that looks nice. I'd love to have me a uh, smoke kingfish. Nice little smoke kingfish, or even do some sushi with it like I was talking. They make excellent sushi, especially that size right there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> King mackerel. Oh, it's way down in there. Now what, uh, what other species is in the kingfish family? You got what, wahoo? Well, they're a pelagic. So, of course, you've got Spanish mackerel, Ciro mackerel, all the mackerel family, and then the wahoo, you know, gets into that upper echelon that of the That gets in the, fish. in the tasty family. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, hey, y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back with some more addictive fishing. Captain Ryan Farner. All right, Austin. Yes, we're going to do a show. We already did the show in Lake Okeechobee. We uh, started out using the DOA airheads down there, catching some good bass, and then we switched to live shiners down there. And I tell you what. <laughs> Lake Okeechobee, you're fishing for bass, and you're using shiners down there the size of fish I use for tarpon, and you're catching five, six-pound bass on, on size baits I use for tarpon. Amazing. All right, uh, speeding right along now. We're going we're gonna to kind of change it up a little bit, and we're going to talk about uh, the hummingbird unit right now. Now, the reason I'm talking about hummingbird and trolling motors in the same, time, uh, same, same kind of sentence is a hummingbird now has a trolling motor that will talk to your GPS. It's called the iPilot Link. I'm sure you know a lot of people have heard about it out there, but uh, it is one awesome unit. You 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 can set up your um, you can set up your remote with a bunch of different waypoints on it, and then tell your remote to tell your trolling motor to go to the to the spot. Actually, we shot a video of it. Um, check this out real quick, and we'll be right back, and I'll, I'll answer questions about it and tell you about a few more features of how I use it offshore. So check this out. It's about the link. Folks, Minn Kota has done it again, and here it is. It's the new Minn Kota iPilot Link. It's the first remote control trolling motor that's integrated right here with your Humminbird Electronics. Check this remote out. It's gonna show you the speed of the trolling motor, the direction you're going, water depth, water temperature, and color icons for spot lock, autopilot, and go-to features. Guys, you gotta check it out. This is one awesome remote control for your trolling motor. My favorite feature of the iPilot happens to be the spot lock. Now the spot lock is a GPS anchoring system that's right up in the head of the motor. Now one thing cool about the iPilot link now is that I can set an anchor point with my remote or right here on my Humminbird system right here. All I have to do is press the little anchor icon right there and it shows up right on your screen. And you can save your spot locks right here in your remote or you can save them right here in your Humminbird unit. One awesome feature. One new feature with the Minn Kota iPilot link is the iTrack. Let me show you how this works. Now on the Hummingbird unit, you can actually record your iTrack with this unit or you can record it through the remote. Here's what you do. You hit your record button, you follow your track, and one reason I like this feature is because you can follow the contour, the flat, or any edge that you wanna go. When you're done with your track, you hit stop record and save, and it's saved right to your Hummingbird fish finder. And you can store up to 50 eye tracks right here in your Humminbird unit or 16 eye tracks in your remote. And a cool thing, each one of them can be two miles long. Another new feature with the iPilot link is the go-to command. I can hit the button here on the Humminbird unit. I can choose my spot locks, eye tracks, or down here on my waypoints. Also, I don't have to be right here on my Humminbird unit to control it. I can be on my remote anywhere on the boat. Folks, is that the coolest thing or what? And the new Altera is, is going to have the link feature in it eventually as well. And this is the remote that goes to the iPilot link. Uh, it's a little bit big. And if you don't like using the big one, the small one always always will work for you too. Um, it's, it's a great little added feature that they have with that small little remote because you don't use all those buttons all the time. I mean, that most of the time there's three or four buttons on there that I'm going to use all the time. And that's right where they put it is right on this little tiny remote. But... Um, Okay, we talked about the about the trolling motor. We got the iPilot link. Now I want to talk how this motor can help you out by talking to your hummingbird. Uh, we were out in Texas, um, and unfortunately, we didn't have the link hooked up at the time. But um, <clears throat> when you do have the link hooked up with the iPilot, imagine what what kind of fish you can catch as you're looking at your depth finder, recording and using this remote. It's it's absolutely phenomenal. And what the 360 imaging does 
basically, if you've seen the commercial that Minn Kota does, it kind of lifts up the water and it's got that little radar beacon. Well, imagine the water down. If you've ever seen a, a radar screen, this thing is basically giving you a 360 image of what's all around you up to 360 feet out from the boat. I normally keep it on like 120 feet because it, it it's able to zoom in more. You can see the grass, the grass beds and little potholes and undulations in the bottom. But um, just real quick, let's check this footage out from Texas. We were out there fishing and the, the water was absolutely dirt brown dirty. You couldn't even see the bottom, but we fired up the 360 and watch what we saw. The, the grass beds were come up perfect on this. Check this out. I wanna show you the most awesome piece of equipment that I've seen in many, many years. It's my new Humminbird unit, right on my brand new SX220 Skeeter. This unit will definitely help you catch more fish, and I'm gonna show you why right now. The water is so dirty right now that you cannot see them physically, so I'm depending on my Humminbird electronics to find my grass beds. And if you see all the little clumps here, this is where the grass beds are starting. And we're coming up an incline to the bank, and the closer you get to the bank, the more grass that's gonna appear. It doesn't matter if the water's dirty, doesn't matter if it's bubbly like this, you can find where they're at. For Minn Kota or Hummingbird? Uh, Minn Kota and Hummingbird, I'm, I enjoy both of them. They're both, uh, they're both on my boat. Uh, and that was a question from O'Neill Lee. I think that was supposed to be Minn Kota or the other one. <laughs> oh, let's see. Sorry, folks, that was a side imaging. Uh, that's just a little sliver of what we're going to show you uh, coming up with the 360. But that was side imaging we were using right there in, in Texas, using and looking at those grass, um, the grass beds out there. You could actually see where they were growing up and then the mud that was all around them. Absolutely, you know, the fish ain't got a chance anymore. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and take a look at the 360. Now, we were down with uh, with Jeff Hageman down in Boca Grande. And, you know, people talk about there's 70,000 tarpon that swim by or in this school any given day out there. Um, but I've never seen it. And it's on the side imaging that we had. I'm sorry. We'll show you the 360. It's coming up. That's that's the coolest feature. But another side imaging we're going to show you was down in uh, Boca Grande with Jeff Hageman. And the school of tarpon down there, I don't think has ever been shown on a side imaging graph, but 70,000 of them. I don't think there's quite that many, but I didn't sit there and count them all. Check this out. Happy, happy, happy fish. They are happy. There's not many sharks around messing with them. Uh-uh. Well, welcome back, folks. We're still sitting here off Boca Grande. We got tarpon rolling around everywhere in front of us, or should I say behind us right now. You can actually hear them coming up and if you hear them, they're sucking in air to their air bladder. That side imaging really picks them up and it, it really shows them off. I mean, you can see every little bit detail of the fish. It's helped us tarpon fishing immensely. Anybody that I know that's using side imaging right now, they don't know what they ever did without it. All these fish won't roll all the time. They won't come up and suck air. So when they don't do that on the beach and the water's dirty and you can't see them, you can find them in that side imaging. Well, if y'all didn't know why they gulp air, they have an air bladder in there. And over millions of years, a tarpon has developed an air bladder in their body. Basically, it helps them control where they are in the water column. But not only that, when you get over the school of tarpon, you can see the bubbles coming up. And what they're doing there, they're pushing that air out of that air bladder, and it comes back over their gills, and it gives them you know, all the oxygen that they need. And they're one of the only fish that can live in really, really oxygen-deficient water. Pretty neat after millions of years they develop that, huh? They get up in those estuaries up there when they're really, really small. All right, we're going to take a couple more questions here, and then finally I'm going to show you what my favorite feature of the Humminbird is, and that's the 360. It's like radar underneath the water. It'll, it'll show you everything that's around you 360 feet away. Uh, take a couple more questions here. Catfish crew, what's going on? Luciano. Um, let's see, going down, never use spool tech, Peter, uh, inshore or offshore. You know, if I can get offshore, I'll flip a coin, you know, it doesn't matter as long as I'm getting my, uh, hooks wet. <laughs> uh, what other depth finder, fish finders have I used? Gosh, I've used uh, about every one out there made. And, um, I do like the hummingbird. It, it, it's part of Johnson controls and it just kind of, yeah, I'm sorry, Johnson outdoors. Johnson controls is a company over in, <laughs> over on the beach. I, used to work for many moons ago but uh johnson outdoors they envelope uh hummingbird Minn Kota, like i said earlier they just cover every part of the boat that i need covered so you know i'm, I'm sticking with hummingbird i've you know i've i've learned uh, i've learned the screens i've learned the buttons why if it ain't broke don't fix it right and I've, i can catch plenty of fish with the hummingbirds 
and there's nobody else that's got a spot lock and I pilot link. That's another reason why I'm with them. Uh, best lure in Homa Sasa. Uh, Billy Henderson will tell you that it's uh, the Miradine. This dude right here. And he loves and he loves the one with the uh, Mogan hooks on it. Oh, my bad. Producers. <laughs> there we go. The one with the Mogan hooks, you can get it right there at Dick's. Look for it. It's got that orange sticker on it right there. And be careful of those hooks because uh, I've said it before. <clears throat> it's the sharpest hook I've ever put through my finger before. When am I having a next live show? Jack, sorry, this is the last one for the year. Um, next one we got scheduled is going to be coming up in April, I believe. Uh, maybe one before then, who knows? We might uh, slot one out once a month. It might get bored and get cold here over in January and February. And, you know, I miss you guys. I need to come talk to you. You never know. Uh, best bait for amberjack. Love butterfly jigs for amberjack. Just deep jigging and just, you know, quick twitching. You know, 70, 80 foot of water. Good time to fish for snook. Um, anytime they're biting, I've saw more divorces come from snook fishermen than anything else. Once you think you got a snook figured out, he's going to do a 180 on you, and it's going to be another, you know, few months before you can figure out how to catch him again. Um, favorite part of the Everglades to fish? Mm. Mouth of the Shark River. There's a show that we did, a, a couple of shows we've done. 2001, A Glades Odyssey. DOA and the Glades. DOA and the Glades. Uh, go check those videos out on our YouTube channel. There's 500 and something videos up there, so search for it. Uh, a couple of good episodes. We were wading, and a guy had a shark come up and snatch a trout right off his, right off his uh, rod. It was pretty cool. Strangest thing I've seen while I'm out fishing. Um... Even though it's the internet, I don't think I can say that. <laughs> There's been some tr strange things I've seen out fishing. Um, I, I thought I saw a swordfish right off Canaveral, and I was talking to a guy just a couple of days ago. We were out fishing. I thought I saw a swordfish in like uh, 200 feet of water up sun in one day. Um, that's, that's pretty rare because there are 1,600 foot fish is where you normally start targeting those guys at. Um, but that was a weird thing. I can't, there's so many things I can't, can't, you know, name them all. When's the best time to fish for snook? Oh, when the water's warm and they're eating. I mean, that's, that's about the best thing I can tell you. Um, nighttime is probably the best because they are more of a nocturnal fish. Favorite fish to fish for in Marco Island. A black drum, baby! That's where that was filmed. We were at a real clip. We left from Marco. Best fish that you've caught on light tackle. Uh, 180 pound plus tarpon out of the Keys our very first year with Captain Barry Meyer out of Marathon. Never forget that. Still get chills thinking about that one. If you want to see that one, that one's called The Tarpon uh, on our YouTube channel. Catfish crew in the house. Two of you there, huh? <laughs> Inshore fishing spot. God, I could go on questions all night long. More people, it's going to get tough. Um, been shore fishing in St. Augustine. Oh, yeah. Been uh, inshore and offshore. Captain Jason Keating I went with. He was my partner in the Redfish Tournament Trail. Am I coming to ICAST again? Yes, I'll be there in July. Biggest snook I ever caught. Caught it on the show last year. It was called the Ten Cent Bridge. We renamed it to the Bait Buster Bridge, 48 and a half inches long. Somebody, said, somebody even said it was a rubber trout or something like that. but <laughs> A rubber snook. Uh, mechanical fish. It was no mechanical fish, I can tell you that. Uh, I lost one a few minutes earlier to that. That was uh, could have could have been a mechanical fish. Um, can you talk about my surf rods? Um, the surf rods you can find them at Dicks. Uh, a lot of the Dicks that I've been to here over Christmas break here. I mean, over the past couple of weeks here before Christmas break has had them. Um, go check them out on, online. It's the best thing I can tell you. And, and call your local Dick store in the southeast and see if they have them. Um, I know in the northeast they had a pretty good, uh, pretty good amount of them in the stores up there, uh, wherever they were big sport, uh, surf fishing up there. Thanks, Robert. This live stuff's kind of kind of new for me. Planning to do any salmon fishing on the show? Um, you never know. I haven't been up uh, up where salmon. I've never fished where salmon swim, so I'm sure if it swims in the water I'm fishing in, I'll catch them, or I'll try to anyway. I do my best to. If not, the local guide will. <laughs> uh, would would love to go salmon fishing. I, I, I want to talk about uh, doing a trip to Alaska uh, here soon and. 
I'm sure that we can show you some really weird fish up there. Am I coming to Tampa Bay next season? Yes, I uh, do believe we will. Still want to do that tarpon around the uh, around the skyway. So when they show up, you probably see me there. St. Mary's, Georgia. Yes, I have doing a redfish tournament there out of Jacksonville, but didn't head up there because y'all got a 23 inch slot limit up there, and we did find some that were 26 and a half down there in Jacksonville, but they got tails and they left and we didn't catch them. So we probably should have went back to St. Mary's. Uh, lightest pound test ever with a tarpon. Um, I would say back in my monofilament days, I caught them on six and four pound test up to 50, 60 pounds. Trying to catch that record when I chased world records years ago. All right, guys, we're going to take a look at what I was talking about a little earlier. And this is the 360. Now what the 360 hummingbird does, it's a device on the back of the boat that basically deploys a puck down underneath the boat it gets down underneath your skeg so it gives you a nice clear picture of the bottom 360 degrees around the boat up to about 360 feet out like i said i'd, I'd like to normally set it on about 120 feet because i'm going so slow with it anyway um i'm looking at i'm looking at the screen and if i see something i, I want to be able to see and identify what it is and i mean it's it's a mirror image what it is check this out of the docks uh and of the up view and down view it's it's pretty cool this is in out in texas i want to show you what i think has to be the most awesome feature of the hummingbird unit today is the 360 we have it deployed we came back in the canal systems here because a lot of snook and redfish and the fish that we like to catch hang around these docks and the only way previously to know if they were there was to fish them and spend lots of time. Nowadays, I deploy my 360 down, and if you see each of these pilings here, they're showing up on my 360. Those are fish right there. That little white little line is a fish in there. No telling what kind of fish it is, but at least you know that there's a fish down there to try and fish for. As we come down the side of the bank here, you can see the seawall back here. So see in between the boats right here, you can see that seawall and you can see each one of the pilings that are down. And a matter of fact, that line right there is showing the back of those boats. When we get up here to this big boat, you'll really see the back of the boat really good. But if there were fish in here, there would be just a bunch of little white lines around the pilings right here. Now, if I was tournament fishing right now, I would probably not fish any of these docks right now because I'm not seeing anything on here that tells me that there's redfish down there. Now, when we come by this boat right here, wait till you see the line of the boat when it hits the back of the boat. It's one of the best ways to figure out how to use this. Now, that kind of looks like fish there, and that's the back of the boat I was just talking about. That looks like fish. I would fish that. But with the new 360 Humminbird unit, I tell you what, unbelievable clarity. You know, it's like underwater radar. It will show you everything that's down there. And the best way to learn how to do it is come in the canal system like this and pick you out certain things that you want to see what it looks like underwater and then just reference it. That way, if you're out in an area and you come across something as you're looking, you know, hey, that's a piling down there, or that's an oyster bar, or that's a sand hump, or even uh, grass. It shows grass beds beautifully on this thing. If you notice, that right there, that's the corner of the seawall back over here as it's shaped basically like that. And it's the easiest way to figure out how to use one of these units is to see the stuff above water and then you're able to identify it as you're looking at it underwater. The Humminbird 360 unit, whether you're inshore or offshore, this is the best unit I have ever seen in my life. Highly recommend you try one of these because you'll be watching this TV instead of the one on your couch. Like I said, radar underwater. It looked just like a radar screen. Now, and they even, Humminbird, you can even get a radar puck and put it up top, you know, big radar array, and it'll plug in. So you could have radar underwater, radar above water. You can find fish if they're jumping, flying, swimming, whatever. Just, just a, a great company that has a lot of great products. Um, and now that the trolling motor is actually talking to the, to the actual fish finders, just, you know, what are they going to think of next? The fish ain't going to have a chance. But, um, <clears throat> Oh, where was I going next? Um, well, oh yeah, one thing I want to tell you, just a little tip that I that I used to do during tournaments that, uh, and I had a lot of talks. I was down in Clearwater. I saw somebody here uh, said, "How was my experience in Clearwater?" It was a little bit slow, but the people that did come in, I got they got a lot of one-on-one -on -one time because 
you know, they could sit there and ask me anything they wanted to. But one thing that I did when I was on the tournament trail that I think made, you know, some of our fishing spots so successful is I'd go on Google Earth and I'd, I'd pull and I would search around and find the, the good looking spots, oyster bars, uh, little trinosses, anything out there that might hold fish. And I would put the Latin long down, put the little cursor over the Latin long on the spot, write it down, plug it into my hummingbird unit, go there, check out the spot. And, you know, now with the 360, no matter if it was a dirty water, clear water, high water, low water, I can see what's underneath the water. You know, with that 360, it, it takes the guesswork out of it. I know if there's an oyster bar there, I don't have to wait till low tide to know there's an oyster bar there. And the 360 is going to show fish if it's around that oyster bar. So another great tool and another little tip you can use out there with the, uh, with the products out there that Johnson Outdoors makes. Uh, another thing I want to talk about, if you don't like that troll motor on the front of the boat, they make a removable puck. It's uh, just a quick disconnect. And I, I take a puck and put it on the back of my boat, put it on another spot of the boat where I can basically lock it in and uh it's nice and secure but it, it'll open the bow up all the way for me and that's just a uh another and if you let's take a little quick look at what i'm talking about it's just something you can take off the front of the boat you want to fly fish perfect little deal you can do check this out we'll be right back i do have a little deal here i call it a, a hockey puck but it's a, it's basically a puck that attaches to the front of the boat to make it easy to put the motor on and off And basically it slides down and attaches. And you take this pin here, it's a double pin, slides right in the holes. And it's got a little locking pin and you're back to a 24 volt trolling motor on the front and you can fly fish and then go back to go what we're gonna go do right now, which is plug fish for some big snook. Ooh, baby. Like I said, guys, what are they going to think of next to make fishing just a little bit more easier for you? Uh, Johnson Outdoors, they, they've pretty much thought of it all, and I don't know what in the world they're going to think of next. Real quick, I'm going to tell you what we got coming up here uh, for next year. Starting, de Actually, it's going to be this year. Starting December 28th, if y'all get the Pursuit Channel. Uh, it's channel 604 on DirecTV. Dish is 393. It's going to be Monday at 9 a.m. So Monday at 9 a.m. on the Pursuit Channel, check it out. Uh, it'll be this year's show starting on a brand new network, no, no longer on the Sportsman's Channel. Um, also, upcoming this Saturday, the 19th in Daytona, I'm going to be there from 11 to 4, and in Melbourne um, the next day on the 20th from 11 to 4. So if y'all get a chance, come out there. I'm going to have $10 off coupons. Uh, they have the Seaguar Smackdown now. Uh, I've been talking about it on the show. Every Dick's that I've been to in the past month and a half has had this on the shelves. Great new product to, to check out. It's the thinnest uh, braid I've ever used in my entire life. It's um, You've seen it on the show all last year. Um, awesome stuff. Come by and check it out. I'll be, like I say, in Melbourne or uh, Daytona uh, this coming weekend. Come by and check it out. Get your 10 buck off coupon on it. Um, they got mirror lures and mogan spoons, everything else there too you can come get. Uh, looks like it's going to be a good fishing year this year too because the weather has absolutely been beautiful. It looks I don't even know if we're going to get a freeze this year. We might have mosquitoes all year. <laughs> uh, let's see. Bryce, uh, Bryce Sammons has a question here. Please tell me if the 360 will find my target. Your target? Well, yeah, if you lose your target, it'll find your target. That thing will find anything. Uh, hello from Ireland. Thanks for the cool show. Cool beans, Shane. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Hey, where else? Uh, anybody out there from out of the country? Uh, is the old Ranger Flats boat? Is the old Ranger Flats boat what? Huh? It was the old Ranger Flats boat. Oh, yes, it was the old Ranger Flats boat. Uh, this is David from the Catfish Crew. I want to know if you had room for a couple of veterans on a fishing trip, maybe around March. Uh, that's a good possibility, but we're right in the middle of that's heavy swing time for us when we're filming. So catching me, uh, on the phone and not on the water that time of year is pretty tough. Um, do some questions. I'm doing questions. Here we go. What's my biggest fish? How about an 18 foot hammerhead? Just do quick questions. I'll fire a bunch out. How's that? Luba said, what's your biggest fish? I say Norway. Check it out. Orange beach, Alabama, Norway, man. It's cold up there right now, ain't it? Um, Miami, Legend, Cape Coral, 
What's the best reel for speckered trout and redfish? Um, the Sabalos 2500 to 3500, great reel. I uh, use it all the time. Been using it for many years now, and it's, it hadn't done me wrong. Baffin Bay equals trophy trout. We tried, brother. We tried for two days, three days solid for a big trout in Baffin. Caught a lot of trout and a lot of redfish, but none of them double digits. But what a beautiful place, man. 22 or 24 skier. Uh, 20. Which do I prefer, 22 or 24? Each one of them have their own likabilities, and I don't I haven't disliked anything about either one of them. But I like the 24 to run offshore. It's a little bit longer boat. You don't get beat up uh, as bad. It's got a nice soft ride to it. Uh, so the 24, hands down, love it. Baffin Bay, I got that one. What's my best fishing story? Uh, you're going to have to catch that one in April because we're starting to run out of time on this one now. <clears throat> Am I coming to Dunedin time soon? Haven't got any chance, uh, any plans to come to Dunedin. Best leader to use with SmackDown, of course, Seaguar or fluorocarbon. The regular um, with the SmackDown, I like the Premier, especially in the winter time. Uh, there we go, because the Premier is a little bit softer. Um, definitely like to use that in the winter time, just because it's a little bit softer and uh, it makes your lure work a little bit better. Uh, would I catch a blue marlin? Yes, I would catch a blue marlin. <laughs> I tried a couple times. Best line, Seaguar Smackdown. Best line I've ever used. <clears throat> Am I going to Pensacola Dicks? Not in the near future, I don't think so. Uh, look for some new things going on with Addicted Fishing and Dicks next year, though. It's going to be called the, um, should I say it? Sure. Yeah? Um, we'll be doing some weekend warrior challenges like we did out of Clearwater a couple of years ago. So, um, everybody vote on your spots, I guess, where we want to go, where we want to do these things. I think we want to be out of Clearwater again for sure, but, uh, it'll just be one store and not the fiasco of three or four stores at a time though, I think, but, uh, just one store and <coughs> catch a lot of fish. Excuse me. Should you go fishing tomorrow? Leonard, go fishing anytime you can, brother. That's all I got to say. Favorite lures, mirror lures and DOA. Been using them for 20 years. They haven't done me wrong. Um, hands down. What, what else do you need? Maybe a little Procure every once in a while. And no, they're not a sponsor, but I do love the stuff. <laughs> Any new rods coming out? Um, Kenny Conley, when are we going to see a new Sabalos? <laughs> always. Kenny Conley, when are we going to see a new Sabalos? That's a good question. Come see me in. Actually, tune in to iCast. <coughs> In July, um, I just got informed that we'll probably be doing a live AF remote from iCast, and I'll cover some new products out there that's coming out, uh, stuff I've been talking about on the show, stuff I've been using on the show. be a lot more one-on-one -on -one like we're doing now. Uh, favorite kingfish rig? Mm, number six wire, and I always just haywire twist two treble hooks on it, one for a stinger and then a swivel up top. Simple, simple rigs. I don't do anything out of the ordinary to catch fish. Um, same old thing that's been done for a hundred years. You, you know, it's, it's, it's not brain science as, as Mark Nichols from DOA says, all you're trying to do is fool a fish with a little tiny brain like that. Some of them swordfish gets a little intricate in what you got to do to get them to eat. But, uh, for the most part, it's simple, stupid. You're, you're feeding a fish that's hungry. Somebody asked when you're coming to Melbourne. When am I coming to Melbourne? I will be in Melbourne uh, Sunday the 20th from 11 to 4. This coming uh, Sunday. This coming Sunday. What did I say, the 20th? Yeah, this coming Sunday the 20th from 11 to 4. Um, cool. How do I like the 210? Absolutely love the ski, the new Skeeter 210. Um, performs like a 24-foot boat. It was unbelievable. Ever fish for bluefin? No, not yet, but I really would like to. Will I be able to take apart one? I don't understand that one. Favorite top water lure flare for snook? Uh, favorite top water for snook. Um, DOA makes a uh, subsurface bait buster. Kind of, it looks like this one. It's a subsurface. It's got the eye that comes out of the tip of the nose here. I absolutely love burning that across the top of the flats for snook. Um, but the top water just. You know, it, it, it's tough to get them to eat top water, but the um, top dogs are always real good. I've caught them on that before. 
best fishing in California. Well, the only uh, the be, I can tell you the best calico fishing in California is out at San Clemente Island. Uh, that went out there. We caught several in the eight to nine pound range out there with uh, Justin Reynolds. Heck of a dude out there. A good skateboarder. Um, what do you fish for in January and February in Tampa Bay? Um, that's a good question. I know that uh, I would be looking for the deepest holds that I could find because it's, it's usually that's our coldest two months. So wherever you got the deepest water, that's where I'd be fishing. And I know that they do a lot of uh, a lot of grouper trolling with uh, those big mirror lures, the stretch plugs, uh, right through the right through the channel in Tampa Bay, and they absolutely whack them. Um, here's here's one of them right here that I'm talking about. That's made by Mirror Lure. It's just a super super good stretch plug. Here we go. And these these don't have the trocar hooks on them, but trust me, they will hook whatever eats them. Giant hooks on those guys. <clears throat> what is my favorite episode to shoot? Uh, one where the fish are biting real good, and we can get done in about an hour. <laughs> Um, absolutely love fishing for, uh, just big fish in general. Um, hey, this is Glenimo. There are a few big snooks under close to my house and also night of the lights. I've tried everything. Live baits, dead boots. Can't get them to eat. Any suggestions? Uh, this dude right here. It's a DOA. It is a DOA. And I, I call this one the, uh, the cotton shrimp. And that one right there, I've caught a lot of snook on that. And basically what you want to do with this is if you have current coming, say, from right to left underneath your dock, throw it up in the current and just let it drift back. Don't even want to twitch it until it gets kind of in front of their face. And then maybe just pull it because a shrimp, the only time a shrimp is going to flip like this is when it when he's when he's spooked. And you might, you know, if, if he's. If you're, uh, if you're seeing the fish not react to the bait at all when it comes in the first time, throw it up again and give it a quick twitch when it gets, you know, five feet from him. Next time, try it three feet from him, four feet from him, you know. Just bury it up until you can figure out where he wants that bait presented where he's going to be real comfortable eating it. Uh, if, if they're sitting down on the bottom, another good bait. This is a DOA Terrorize. And this one, <laughs> this one is a... Uh, this one is called the golden brim color. It has now become one of my favorite colors because it just has a lot of that flash in there that attracts the fish when it, when a little bit of light hits them. So, uh, two two great baits to use for snook down there. Uh, give the what's that? Uh oh. Check check. I don't know. Uh, not sure. Uh -oh. We're back on now. Hey, I don't know if we're back on yet, but on there we go. Nope, not yet. But on the screen, hey, are we back on? No, Where in Melbourne am I going to be? I'm going to be at the Dick store right in the Melbourne Square Mall. Uh, we're froze up. Hmm. Just changing here, different. Keep talking. Okay. Well, can they hear me or not? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we're froze up here on the video, guys, and uh, well. We're froze. We have audio. Okay. Your bloopers will never be as funny as Bill dances. I hope not because I know Bill has gotten quite, uh, quite a few injuries during his, uh, <laughs> during his bloopers, but, uh, we're down to one camera now, guys. Um, let's see. Removable puck caught it. Did it all. I'm going down my, uh, my checklist of what I'm covering right now. Once again, I'm gonna cover my appearances coming up. <clears throat> Once again, I'm going to be in this Saturday coming up. I'm going to be in Daytona from 11 to 4, Sunday the 20th in Melbourne at the Melbourne Square Mall, Dick Sporting Goods from 11 to 4. If y'all get a chance to make it out there, come on out. Talk fishing. Uh, share a knot with you. I got a new knot that I'll show you. It's the FG knot. One awesome knot. Um, my New Year's resolution, catch more fish. How's that? If I if that's a possible possibility. Um <laughs> Not frozen on your screen. Okay. Well, listen, guys. We're going to wrap it up. We're going on, whoa, almost an hour. God, time flies when I'm doing this. I can't believe it. But uh, going on an hour, want to say Merry Christmas to you guys out there. Have a safe and happy holidays. Uh, be safe out there on the water because you got some cold fronts coming in. And uh, that water can turn on a dime on you and it can get rough. So uh, there's always a better day to go out and fish. So.
If the, if the weather's rough, eh, mow the lawn or, you know, do something. Go tie a lure. <laughs> Re-rig some rods. Do something. But anyway, y'all have a great holiday, and we will see you next year. I want to say thanks from everybody here at the Addictive Fishing Crew. Thanks for tuning in each and every week on the Internet and got all the social media pages. And uh, I know it's only five, ten days, but we'll see you next year. Y'all have a good one. Good luck on the water.